This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Promises Behavioral Health. Have negative impacts from the craziness of life, the ups and the downs, the unknown, the doubts, all the things we deal with on a daily basis. I know they're exhausting sometimes. It seems like it's never going to end. When are we going to change? What are we going to do? Who knows, man? Man, I know for me, I was exhausted at the end of my rope, over it, couldn't take it anymore. My social life, I had social anxiety, my well-being, my health. Man, if you're struggling through any of this and it sounds familiar to you, the pains of alcohol, the pains of addiction, or a mental health disorder, now's the time to seek some help. Let this be an opportunity for you to get back on track to finding the real you, finding who you are as a human being, as a person. Man, I didn't find out, I didn't start to find out who I was till I was 32 years old, till I quit alcohol, gave it up, and started down a different, a different path in my life. You're not alone in this. I know it feels like it sometimes, but you're not. There's so many men and women out there who are going through it, and Promises Behavioral Health is here for you, and they can help you, or they can help your loved one. Uh, we've worked with Promises for years. We know their teams personally. We have great relationships with them. They're amazing people. They care. And most importantly, we trust Promises, and so can you. So if you're looking for some professional help, you want more options, you want more information about Promises treatment options near you, uh, here's what you can do. You can go to promisesbehavioralhealth.com slash sober guy. That's promisesbehavioralhealth.com slash sober guy. Or you can just pick up the phone and you can call 888-205-1890. That's 888-205-1890. Tell them that you heard about them from that Sober Guy podcast. Let's have some fun. That Sober Guy podcast contains adult content, merciless truth, and emotional nudity. Listener discretion is advised. I'm Shane Raymer. You're listening to That Sober Guy podcast, and we help people stay sober. If it's your first time listening, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here today. Perfection is the enemy of excellence. (laughs) Kind of said it in my wrestling voice. Remember our old counselor, James. It's the first time I heard that James said it. He had his Hawaiian shirt on with his turtleneck underneath. (laughs) Classic long ponytail glasses. He was a good dude. He is a good dude. I haven't seen him or heard from him in a long time, but taught me a lot. And that was one of the things that I always remember. Perfection is the enemy of excellence. And perfection is something that... I have struggled with and still struggle with till this day. And that goes right hand in hand with control and all the things that go with it. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Before we do that, are you tired of drinking? Maybe that's why you're here today. In addition to promises, awesome resources, we have some resources of our own. So maybe that's the route you want to go down. We have a 30-day program designed to help you quit drinking for 30 days or more. It's called Quit Drinking Dude, the ultimate men's guide to quit drinking alcohol and stay sober for 30 days or more. You can check it out right now. Go to thatsoberguide.com. And for the end of the month, what's the date today? Today is the 11th as this goes live. So through the 28th, we'll still be offering the course, the program, the challenge for 50% off. So you can just use the promo code 50% off. And then it'll go to the regular price at the at the beginning of March. So if you're trying to jump into the 30-day alcohol-free challenge and you want to check it out, it's 30 podcasts in 30 days with exercises, lots of good stuff. I've had some amazing feedback on it. You join the men's group on our locals page, which I'm going to get to in just a minute. And uh, man, check it out if you're interested. Go to quitdrinkingdude.com and uh, use that promo code. You can follow us on Instagram at that sober guy podcast. You can join us in our sober guy men's group on the locals platform. You can just download the locals app or you can go to that sober guy podcast.locals.com. And uh, we have a lot of other resources at that sober guy.com as well. So if you're looking for a meeting, uh, we have some merch on there. We have the podcast is obviously on there. 
Um, if you want to reach out to to us here at the show or myself personally, there's a contact form on there. Uh, and uh, if you want to work with me, you can do that too. A little form on there as well. So all the links from today's podcast will be in the show notes. So uh, if you want to make it easy for yourself, you can just check that and click and go to whatever you're looking for. All right. Perfection is the enemy of excellence. Once again, what a great, uh, a great saying. And my buddy Roland had a great chat with him yesterday. He really lit a fire under my ass. He's in a uh, part, it was been a, a friend of mine for a long time, but he's also a part of our men's mastermind group, which by the way, I'm going to be uh, launching a new uh, sober mastermind group coming up here in the spring. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to be picking uh, probably six to eight dudes uh, to be involved in that. And we're going to go through for three months uh, once a week. And masterminds are a great way to, man, not only have some accountability and, and, and quit drinking, but also to find purpose. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're stuck in your job, uh, if it's a relationship, whatever it is that life's doing, that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about in our own mastermind group. And so, uh, yeah, if you're interested in the one coming up in, uh, in the springtime, uh, shoot me an email or just go to the contact form at that sober and just put mastermind group in there. And, uh, I will, I will, uh, I will know that that's what you're talking about. And then, uh, we can chat a little bit and see if it's, something, I can give you some more info, see if it's something you might be interested in, but Roland, uh, you know, after our meeting, we meet on Thursdays, uh, Thursday mornings early. And, uh, after our meeting, we talked a little bit. And uh, man, he, he, one of the questions he asked me, because we were talking about perfection and, and kind of my struggles with that, taking too long on things, um, getting really hard or being really hard on myself if I do mess up. Um, and he said, man, he said, where, if you're perfect, what's the only way you can go from perfect? And the answer is down. <laughs> so if we're perfect, there's no room to grow. There's no room to go up. There's no room to move on, progress. There's only room to go down. So let's scratch the perfection and let's shoot for excellence. Let's be great. Let's be um, amazing at what we do. Let's stay positive. Let's work hard. Let's serve others. All those things that come with trying to live um, a fulfilling life, in addition, being healthy, being well, uh, spiritually, emotionally, physically, all those things fall in to excellence and the enemy of excellence is 100% perfection. Um, and it's something that I'm continuously having to work on. So, um, I wanted to dive into a little bit more of that today. And then before we do that, I had a special shout out request. Uh, I haven't got one of, one of these, uh, specific shout out requests in a while. So I thought, man, I, I can't wait to do this one. So this one comes, uh, from Kilo, uh, Kilo says, uh, hi, I was wondering if you can do a special anniversary shout out to my, to my fiance, Kyle. Uh, he's a huge fan and has been listening to your podcast nonstop. He said he can relate to you so much. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Kilo. So Kyle, my friend, happy anniversary there it is a little round of applause there good stuff and i'm glad you're enjoying the show and i'm happy uh that you're celebrating it's probably not on this day that you're listening to this but if you've already celebrated i hope you had an amazing time and if you're if it's coming up and you're going to celebrate here man just have a great time enjoy it and uh, keep moving forward and keep listening to the podcast. If you have requests or questions or anything, feel free to, uh, to respond. So I appreciate the support so much. And thank you for the message. Really does mean a lot to me. I love, I love reading them when I get them. And then when I get an opportunity to read them on the podcast like this, it's, uh, it's awesome stuff. So, um, so I want to talk about a, a few points then uh, with this perfection is the enemy of excellence. And I want you to think about first how this relates to you. Do you struggle with perfection yourself? Um, is that something that you find yourself uh, worried about or overthinking or stressed about? Like it's got to be in this specific place right now. And if it's not, I freak out about it. Um, everything I, I struck part of the perfection for me is, is cleanliness. Now don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being clean 
and being cleanly and being healthy and smelling good. <laughs> you know, like nobody wants to be around someone who don't brush their teeth and smells like ass. Like it's just, <laughs> that's not fun. So I want to be clean, but even like my room, uh, my space, like my area, my office, um, it has to be generally clean or I freak out. Okay. And so there's some perfection issues in that. And how, so how do you balance keeping stuff clean? If that's your thing, I'm just using that as an example right now. And also being okay if the day gets away from you or the week gets away from you and your area is a little cluttered a little bit, um, it's not going to ruin your night and make you lose sleep over it because it's done that to me before. I will lose sleep if everything's not lined up and I can't finish projects. That's part of it. It's finishing stuff. So like if I don't finish something, if I leave it open ended, it's on my mind and I can't stop thinking about it until it's done. And so those types of things, they fall into perfection. You know, and those are just a couple examples. Maybe you have a couple examples of your own, some things that you're thinking of that bug you. Or maybe it's somebody that you live with, a spouse, a, a child, um, it's, maybe it's a grown adult child, you know, that stays with you, or you're living with, or, or it's your wife or husband, um, a roommate, whatever the situation is, you know, if it's somebody or something, you know, those types of things can really drive us uh, not only crazy, but back to drinking in some, in some instances, if we're not careful, because we can't handle the stress, we can't handle the, the pressure um, of not being in this state of perfection. And, you know, one of the other things that my buddy Roland, uh, mentioned and a big shout out to Roland, if he does ever listen to this, but, um, he said, man, do you know how hard it is to live with somebody who is a perfectionist? Um, and, and, man, I, I do because my wife tells me, <laughs> and I think Roland, I think it's okay if I say this, he's had a little experience with this him, himself. And so he can relate to it as well. And it's, you know, it's, it's tough to be on the other end of that, you know? And so I'm really trying to, to do better because I, I don't do it intentional, like intentionally. I'm not trying to be an ass or um, I'm not trying to like, you know, upset anybody or make anybody feel less or not is like, I'm better. It's just, my brain is wired for per like this. It has this idea of how things should be or they need to be. And if it's not like that, I, I get messed up sometimes. And, you know, that's another thing that, that buddy and I have worked on together too is I remember him telling me, he said, look, like just because somebody does it different than you, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means it's different. So for instance, if let's just say, I, I don't know why this is a total random example, but we're raking the leaves. Okay. Me and another guy, it's an imaginary guy. We're both working together and we're raking the leaves. And this guy, this some bitch, <laughs> <laughs> my grandpa used to say that back in the day dead dead shum bitch <laughs> so this some bitch wants to rake the leaves from left to right i told him i said you rake the leaves from right to left okay because that is the right way you want to do it left to right that's that's wrong why am i talking like that i have no idea <laughs> but do you catch what i'm getting at here the imaginary guy and I'm working in the backyard with him. There's a, a shitload of leaves out there and he wants to rake them left to right and pick them up with his left hand and put them in the garbage can. And I want to rake them right to left and pick them up with my right hand. And that's the right way to do it because I say so. And if he does it with his left hand and rakes them left to right, he's wrong. <laughs> now shit like that would honestly could ruin my day. And that's, that's kind of a goofy example, right? But you, I think you probably get the point. Somebody doing something different than I do it, it doesn't make it wrong. So when we live with people, when we live with our spouse, um, roommates, our kids, maybe we live with family, we're all different. We're different people. And we have to be able to accept the fact that people do things differently. And there's not, they're not going to be perfect at it as neither are we. 
You know, so, so where does some of this stuff come from? It kind of leads me to the first point here. Where does this come from? And I know for me where it comes from. I wasn't allowed to mess up as a kid. If I messed up, it was a shit show. Like I was in trouble. I was talked down to. Um, if you left a crumb on the counter, you, I mean, you don't even want to know. It was ugly. You know, it was this constant like bombardment of pressure to not mess up. So that was that that went from cleanliness in the house to baseball. So like if I messed up in baseball, you know, um, I don't talk about that a lot. I played a ton of baseball growing up, man. It's my favorite. I, that's why probably why I love being around baseball still till this day. And I'm getting an awesome opportunity right now to coach both my kids, which is amazing, you know. And but even as a kid, and I've tried to learn from this, so I make sure I do not do this to my to my kids. And it's not I'm not faulting my my dad or my parents or anything right now. I mean, they were just doing the best they could at the time. I have no like I'm not angry about it. I've done a lot of work on that. Um, I can talk about it openly. I, I feel like now without being, you know, pissed off or upset. Um, but man, there was a lot of pressure like as a kid. And like, if I didn't perform well, or if I like um, in baseball terminology, if I struck out or made an error, I always felt like that pressure, like to be perfect and you can't mess up. And what's funny, man, is baseball is a game of failure. Like, tell me another game where you can bat 300 and be considered like amazing or pretty damn good. Like, there, I can't think of another sport or another thing, you know, it, there may be, but I can't think of one off the top of my head. Like, you fail in baseball as part of the game, you know? And so I never really learned how to fail really, really well. You know, that's one of the things I brought up to to our team the other day, and they're eight years old, man. So we're just really focused on learning the game and having fun, you know? But one of the things I brought up is, yes, we want to win and we're going to learn how to win, but it's so important to learn how to make a mistake and learn how to lose at the same time. I'm not saying I want to be a loser. I'm not saying I want to lose, but we're going to lose. It's inevitable. We're not perfect. So we need to learn how to handle that. And when, when we can learn how to handle those things at a younger age, we're going to be that much more ahead of the game. Now, I was like, I've said this a lot on the podcast. I was always my own worst enemy. I was always the hardest on myself. Man, so easy to get down on myself and, and get pissed off at myself and beat myself up, you know, and it, it just, it's really affected my confidence and my self-worth. It's affected a lot of that. You know, I've had to, and I've had to continuously do work on this still, you know, I just did it yesterday in the conversation with Roland, you know, without going into detail about it, but you know, and, and that's why I do things like mastermind groups, like our locals men's group, like meetings, obviously you do the podcast, you know, we, I, I do those things and other dudes participate in those things because that's how we get better. We get feedback, we get uh, advice um, we hear other people's stories and how they've done it and what they liked and what worked and what they didn't like and what didn't work. We don't do this stuff on our own, you know? So I know from experience that these types of things work, they work and they help us, um, as long as we can remain teachable and open-minded, they help us grow. They help us get better. So I know where a lot of that perfectionist uh, mentality comes from. It comes from being wired that way as a kid, you know? And the next thing is I don't have to be, nor do I want to be perfect, okay? I don't have to be and I don't want to be, but I try sometimes. <laughs> I try, you know? Um, and it's, it, it's still, it's, it's a lot of pressure still. And so how do I let some of this go? and not have to, um, you know, not have to carry that weight of having to have everything just the way that I think it needs to be. You know what? It just reminded me of, I need to grab some water. It just reminded me of, um, in the big book, the big blue book, some of you know what I'm talking about. When they talk about, um, I don't remember what page it is, but they talk about how, those of us who struggle with alcohol, we struggle with this perfectionist type of issue. And we want to be, if we're talking about a play, 
we are the actor, we're the director, we're the stagehand, we're the audience, we wrote the script, man, we do it all. And we we literally could try to control every aspect of everything to perfection. And when something goes wrong, we lose our freaking minds. <laughs> and Jess has pointed that out to me quite a few times. Like, man, you're like, you're good. And then something happens and you just like lose your mind. And it's true. Like I, you know, and so I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I've gotten, cause I think the, the, the best way to get better at things is you have to be aware of them first. So that's why you'll hear me talk about these types of things on the podcast. It's not like I want to air all my shit out, but I also, when I get to talk about them, it creates awareness, which, which creates um, an awareness that can help me move forward and fix that types of stuff. So when it comes up again, because it will, I can, I can think about it and I can be aware. Oh, wait a minute. I'm freaking out right now because you know, this just happened and let me ask myself number one thing well two things what am i scared of and the second one um do i have any control over it and probably you know the, the the second part of the answer do i have any control over it usually is no i only have control over me my response how i act what i do what i choose to do what i choose to not do so that's a big part of it too like i have to become aware and the only way I become aware is by learning and growing and staying open-minded, getting feedback, um, uh, talking about this stuff. So whether I talk about it uh, here on the podcast, whether I talk about it on our uh, locals group you know, chat or in our locals men's meeting, that's on Wednesdays, by the way, at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so there's a you know, that's a new meeting that we just, uh, just started doing a few weeks back and it's been great. So if you want to hop on that and just hang with the guys on, on Wednesdays at 5 PM Pacific time, just go join our locals group. And I post it in there every week. Um, but man, we have to be, you know, in, you know, groups and we have to have people and we have to be open about this stuff. That's how we grow. So how do we let go of perfection? and just do the best we can with no expectations. Um, I wish I had, you know, a magic answer. I don't, I don't know that I, um, have that. Actually, I, I know that I don't have that. Um, but what I do know is it is possible to let go when we're aware and when we pray and meditate and we talk about this stuff. What's worked so well for me this week is, um, is getting back to like a routine at, at, at the gym itself. I got in the squat rack today. Um, I got some great quick CrossFit style workouts in on a couple other days during the week. Now, some of you know, listen to the show for a while, like we just moved. Um, so that was, it's been a lot getting settled in. Um, I tried to set up like a home gym in, in, the, in the garage here. And I have the space to do it. I mean, I put a heavy bag up, I bought some kettlebells, um, I, I bought a couple jump ropes, I bought some, uh, we have a pull-up bar in, in the garage that would happen to already be built in when we moved in. Um, so I have some equipment here, you know, and there's a awesome gnarly hill, rocky hill behind us that I was climbing. And so that was fun. And I still, still do that one. But like, there was something that just, I didn't have a squat rack. There were certain things I, I wanted to do I didn't have. And not only that, it just wasn't as motivating, you know, because my office is here too. And so like, it's so nice to get out and to go. And the gym is right down the street from our house. So I was just feeling like, man, dude, like I'm missing something here. And so I had this first workout that I got in back at the gym because we just joined over the weekend on on Monday this week. And man, let me tell you, like five minutes in, I was on the rower. I was I was doing like a, a 2,000 meter row, like warm up kind of session. And man, the first couple of minutes, I just like wanted to cry. It just felt so good. <laughs> like literally, it just, I had the music on and it was just like something was released in me in that moment. 
And some of you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe you do, you do yoga or you, you, you do some sort of fitness or exercise or you do something uh, like hiking or riding, riding a, um, a bike, whatever it is that you do, you know what I'm talking about, that feeling, especially if you've been away for it for a minute where you're just like, ah, man, that feels amazing. It brings me peace. It makes me feel at ease just as I am. And that's what we're looking for. That's the letting go aspect of this. And so for me, like back to the example, I was able to get a great workout in a couple of days this week before work, you know, so I, I got it in before my day started, which is the best. And then at the end of my workout, there, there's a there's a sauna. I don't know what was up with the sauna this week. I usually really love sitting in the sauna, but I don't know if it was just off or what. Um, I couldn't figure out how to get it like super hot. So I opted, which I'll sometimes do both, but I opted for the hot tub and said there's a hot tub outside. So man, there's no, nobody there early, early morning, you know, fairly early. And I can just go sit in the hot tub after I just got a good workout and like nothing crazy, 10, 15 minutes and just close my eyes and, and meditate and pray. And, and man, it's the, it's so amazing. It, allows me to let go of the perfection. It allows me to let go of the pressure, to let go of the stress, to let go of everything and understand that this is how it's supposed to be right now in this moment. And look, we don't need a hot tub and a gym and all that to to get there. I get that. And that's, some would say, well, that's a crutch, you know, and you don't need that. And you should be able to sit and face a wall and do it. And I understand the mentality of that. And I get it. But at the same time, there's things that help us get into those types of modes, especially if we're getting back into them. And man, for me, like a great workout and some hot sauna or a hot tub and being able to just relax, that helps me big time. It, it's it's like huge. And so I realized this week that I had kind of gotten out of my routine of doing that. You know, I had gotten out of the um, the, the routine and I was becoming, um, I was becoming a bit bored, and I was becoming a bit lazy, you know. And I think I, I think some of it was just that I was tired. I was a bit tired just from the move and just everything going on, just a lot of change. And now I'm on this different, different little chapter. I think you know we started this new chapter now, where it's like okay, we've moved on into this next phase. Maybe phase is a better way to put it. Um, But I'm really working on this week on letting go of that perfection and striving to be excellent and and not perfect, but excellent, the best I can do. And the caveat to that is not setting expectations in it either, not setting expectations to be let down when it doesn't work out like I think it should, because that's another enemy. And that's a whole nother podcast in itself. Maybe we'll mess with that. Actually, we will. We'll do something on expectations because that's been, um, that has came up quite a bit lately. So I'll try to make that the next podcast. Um, But letting go of perfection, striving for excellence, um, you know, that is where I find my peace. And that's where I find my you know place to be at ease just the way it is. And there's, there's acceptance in that right? There's, there's a lot of acceptance. We have to be able to accept where we're at and we're supposed to be in this time. And the more we fight it, the worse it gets, you know? So let's wrap this up today. And look, if you're feeling any of this, if any of this makes sense to you, if you relate to it and you feel the the stress of perfection, let me just tell you, you're not perfect and you don't have to be, and neither do I. We need to let go of that. We need to practice letting go. We need to talk about it. We need to be in in, in some sort of support um, environment where we can talk about it. And uh, we have a lot of resources to do that. There's a lot of other ones out there too. So I just encourage you, if it's not sober guy, find something. Find a, a, a meeting, a group in your community, online, your church, wherever it is. You know, If you want to check some of our stuff out, you can go to thatsoberguy.com. Everything is on there. Resources page. Um, You can also go to quitdrinkingdude.com if you're interested in the 30-day program. Um, There's a lot of good meetings on there. 
There's our local. I mean, if you're going to start somewhere and you're a dude out there, that's probably the place I would recommend um, like at the top of the list too is our, our locals men's group is a great spot to get plugged in if you're new to something like that because all the dudes in there are awesome. So what's up to my, my locals buddies? I appreciate you guys. I'm learning from you and um, it's it's just it's an awesome thing. So uh, thank you for tuning in to the podcast today. I appreciate you guys. We've been at this since 2014 and we're not slowing down. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep having fun and we're going to keep helping dudes uh, quit drinking, stay quit and uh, and find purpose. Uh, so if you like the podcast, please share it with a friend. I would greatly appreciate it. You can leave us a review. As always, connect with us on Instagram at That Sober Guy Podcast. Same with the Locals app. Download that. Check us out. And uh, everything we talk about today will be in the show notes. ThatSoberGuy.com. You can find everything there as well. Love you guys. Peace, love, and respect. Keep your blood clean.